Coming up on Vegas Nation Game Day, Raiders, Rams, it's preseason week two. After a few days of joint practices, who will come out on top? I think we're a lot better than what we give ourselves credit, but it's also still too early to tell. We'll bring you everything you need to know for this preseason matchup right here on Vegas Nation Game Day. Vegas Nation Game Day is presented by DNR House of Diamonds, making luxury affordable. Located in the One Summerlin Building in downtown Summerlin. Good morning and welcome to Vegas Nation Game Day, your Saturday show for all things Raiders. The Silver and Black hit the road this week to take on the Los Angeles Rams at 7 p.m. Cassie Soto here with you. Your opening drive is brought to you by Capriotti. There's no better time than game time to score party favorites. Order online to get Capriotti's party trays, box lunches, or large subs for the whole crew. The Raiders have shared the field with the Rams these last few days for joint practices, and Vinny Bonsignor has been there front and center to all the action. He joins us now from L.A. Vinny, you sent out a tweet on Wednesday that made Raider Nation go wild. You said the Raiders' defense has been impressive. Things just look different, better. Can you please explain what you saw to say that? Yeah, you know, and it was interesting. I was talking to some Rams people um, on Wednesday, and, uh, you know, they were up in Napa Valley two years ago when the Rams had a joint practice with the Raiders in the first part of John Gruden's second year with the Raiders, and it looked like it was a long way off. That roster, the Raiders roster, just looked a, such a far way off. Well, same people that I talked to on uh, Wednesday were like, this team's a lot different than than back in 2019. It looks better. Uh, it looks more connected, uh, and especially defensively, um, the the feedback that I was getting, and there's no doubt about it, they they're playing like they believe, uh, like they have confidence, and a lot of times that's half the battle. So it's been a kind of a, a, a recurring theme throughout camp so far. How much better this defense does look. The key, and we keep talking about this, it has to show up on the grass starting September 13th against the Baltimore Ravens, um, but so far, so good. Well, we know things got a little chippy out there in Thousand Oaks, Vinny. How does this type of early competition make teams better? Well, a couple of things. Number one, John Gruden wasn't happy about it. That's why he ordered the horn to be blown to, uh, to, be blown to, to call the practice off. He wasn't happy about it. Uh, but talking to somebody like Josh Jacobs, and I brought this up because he had tweeted on the bus ride back to the team hotel, I love this team, and I specifically asked him, was that in reference to how you guys had each other's back uh, over these last couple of days? And he said, without a doubt, um, you know, how the Raiders handled their business, how they handled what happened uh, on Wednesday and then also on, on Thursday. There were a couple of fights on both days. And, you know, it's a little thing. It may not mean anything. It could mean everything. Uh, but the closeness of this team is starting to become harder and harder to ignore. Vinny, what would you say were the biggest lessons learned from these joint practices? Well, uh, the Rams are good uh, and the Raiders held their own. So that's a positive step in the right direction. I thought we talked about, you know, defensively, uh, they, they had some moments. They had some moments of, you know, I don't want to say domination, but where they controlled things. And, and that's a good sign for them. But the offense, there were times when it was dynamic. Uh, there, the Rams had no answer for Darren Waller. Uh, I know nobody really does. He's that good. Uh, but there were just times where it was just, he was just toying with with the Rams. So I think that was a main takeaway uh, as well. But it, just in an overall sense, to get the kind of reps that the Raiders got against a quality opponent in the Rams who weren't going to back down either, um, I think was, was, was beneficial for, for the building of this Raiders team. Thanks so much, Vinny. Let's go ahead and toss things over now to Vegas Nation's Heidi Fang. Fast Takes brought to you by Pirate Plumbing, the masters of disasters. Hey everyone, it's Heidi Fang here and I'm joined with our NFL and Raiders writer, Adam Hill. We're gonna get you all caught up for everything you need to know about the Raiders versus the Rams tonight. So here we go, Adam. Who will be out there vying for a spot on this 53 man roster? We saw both Trey Regis and BJ Emmons make a big impression last week in the running game. They ran strong, uh, hit holes well, 
they were impressive in the running game but they also did some good things in the passing game. And that's really where we should be focused on because there's a lot of running backs out there that can run the ball. Who you're going to trust on the team, especially in this role, would be a guy that can pick up the blitz and also have an understanding of the passing game when there's not somebody to block in the blitz. Where do you go? What, what route do you run? How do you get open uh, so the quarterback can trust that you're uh, in a good space to dump it off to? And I thought both of them did fairly well. Uh, in that role, but that's really where the focus is going to be from the coaching staff. I wanted to get your take on maybe another position group that you might be watching to see how things shake out once they minimize the roster down even further in the coming weeks. There's just so many bodies on the defensive line that are capable of playing at this level. That is absolutely something to watch. Uh, and then you look at the defensive backs as well. I mean, we kind of have a good understanding of who's going to be on the team. But the rotations, I think, are still to be determined. And But I think we will start to get a little bit understanding of where they stand in the pecking order uh, in the defensive backfield. And that is something to watch as well. All great stuff there, Adam. And now we're going to turn it over to Sam Gordon with By the Numbers. Thanks, Heidi. The preseason rolls along. And since we touched on the offense last week, time to take a look at some of the key defensive numbers from last season. It's no secret the Raiders were among the worst defensive teams in the league last year, allowing 29.9 points per game, the third most in the NFL. They struggled against both the run and the pass, finishing with the seventh worst passing defense and the ninth worst rushing defense. Pass rush, or lack thereof, was a big part of the problem, as the Raiders recorded a mere 21 sacks, the fourth fewest in the NFL. Las Vegas was especially bad late in games, allowing a league high 11 points per game last year in the fourth quarter, and his turnover rate of 8.4% was also the fourth worst in the league, meaning the Raiders had trouble securing takeaways. Help is on the way though this season in the form of a new improved defensive line led by 26-year-old pass rusher Yannick Nagakwe. The Raiders added players who combined for 10 sacks last year on that defensive front and an improved pass rush could pave the way for a better defense to go along with what could be another top 10 offense. I'm Sam Gordon and that's the story by the numbers. Listen to the Vegas Nation podcast three times a week for all your Raiders news, interviews, and game recaps during the season. Best of all, they're free and can be found wherever you find your podcast. Vinny Bonsignor and Sam Gordon host First and Ten on Mondays. Takeaways features Heidi Fang on Wednesdays. And Fridays, you have Ed Graney and Adam Hill's unsportsmanlike conduct. Check it all out today on VegasNation.com. Vegas Nation Injury Brief, sponsored by Not The Injury Law. 2019, I don't think I've missed a practice. In 2020, I've missed like a couple during the season. So it's like, you know, I want to be out there, but it's at the same time, it's like maybe sometimes I do need to sit still for a little bit because it's a long season and just prepare for that. That was Raiders star tight end Darren Waller speaking for the first time about how excited he is to be back on the field with his team after missing the last few weeks. For more on the Raiders injury brief, here's sports columnist Ed Graney. Ed Waller's status was up in the air, but 83 is officially back and is already making an impact. You know, he looked great earlier this week when they practiced against the Rams, had a touchdown catch. Ankles of weird injuries, Cassie. Tonight, I don't know if I'd play him. They know what they have in Darren Waller. He's one of the best tight ends in the world. I don't know if you risk that ankle. I'm not even sure you give him much against San Francisco next week in the third exhibition game. This guy is their best option for Derek Carr. You need him healthy when Baltimore visits Allegiant Stadium to open the season on Monday Night Football. So while it's great that Dar Darren Waller's back for the Raiders and he seems healthy, I'd be very, very careful in terms of when I'd put him in an exhibition game. Well, we know that Nathan Peterman led this team to the victory last Saturday, but do you think if Marcus Mariota is filling up to it, he'll get the start tonight against the Rams? Quarterback's a little different, and Mariota, while they know what they have in him, I do think you need to get him snaps. You never know what's going to happen with your starter and Derek Carr. Uh, Mariota had the leg injury, so I won't be surprised if he gets one or two series tonight. But again, these are guys, especially as a backup quarterback, because your starter, you know, you go down at any play, you need healthy. So unlike Waller, I'm not going to be shocked if we see Marcus Mariota on the field tonight. Not for a long time. I think Nate Peterman gets the bulk of snaps like he did last week, obviously playing the whole game. So I think Mariota has a chance tonight, but I would sit Waller for sure. Vegas Nation Fan Zone, sponsored by your Southern Nevada Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Preseason games aren't just for the players to prepare, they're for the fans. And Vegas Nation has you covered with all your do's and don'ts for the Monday Night Football season opener. Don't bring large bags, weapons, projectiles, strollers, or laptops. Do bring a credit card or payment app because Elysian is a cashless stadium. Do stay hydrated. These water cooling stations surround the stadium. 
do plan your attack. You can walk from the strip across the Hacienda Bridge, which will be closed to cars on game day. They expect 20,000 fans to cross that bridge. Don't park in a reserve lot unless you have a pass. The parking lot gates open four hours before kickoff. The stadium gates open three hours before kickoff. Download the Spot Hero app to park in one of the dozens of lots surrounding the stadium. The Raiders control 35,000 parking spots around the stadium. Do make sure your rideshare driver drops you off at the proper lot. The official rideshare lot is on Dean Martin Drive, just north of Hacienda. By the way, Dean Martin Drive is one way south only, and Polaris Drive is one way north only. That'll do it for Vegas Nation game day, but don't go too far because we will be live at 5.30 p.m. on the Vegas Nation Facebook page to bring you the latest news ahead of the Raiders and Rams 7 p.m. matchup. For our entire crew, I'm Cassie Soto. Thank you for watching. Vegas Nation game day presented by DNR House of Diamonds, making luxury affordable. Located in the One Summerlin building in downtown Summerlin.